In Florida, it's transparent, right. it's efficient, and people have confidence in what we're doing. Right. But can we talk about Disney a little bit? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk about Disney. Uh, the board that you appointed has countersued Walt Disney World for what they're doing. Their light lawsuit, they want to make this a First Amendment issue. You say it's about getting rid of some of these special privileges. How, where do you see this going from here? Well, first, the big issue with Disney was they exercised a lot of political influence in this town, and they tried to fight us on things like parents' rights and things that are really important to the people of Florida. We beat them on that. We signed the parents' rights bill, and we've expanded protections, and we've done a lot of stuff to go back uh, and, and fight woke ideology. Since our skirmish last year, Disney has not been involved in any of those issues. They have not made a peep. That ultimately is the most important, that Disney is not allowed to pervert uh, the system to the detriment of Floridians. So on that front, so you see this as a win for you already. So that, that's, that's a win for the people of Florida. Now, on their self-governing, we also looked at it and say, why should one corporation govern itself, be exempt from laws. It's like the most egregious type of corporate welfare you can believe. So we said no. The legislature passed a statute sunsetting that. We imposed this state board partially because we need to, they need to pay the bonds. There's a whole bunch of right. issues with that. What they tried to do before the state took over, they tried to do a contract with themselves to say we can still govern ourselves. It doesn't matter what the legislature did. It doesn't matter that we won election in November and then implemented this. They wanted to do it. So that contract is not valid. Um, that's the declaratory action state court. We want a court to just acknowledge that. But the legislature here just passed the statute, which I will sign shortly, nullifying that agreement because these development agreements under Florida law are subject mm -hmm. to revocation. So I think they got too cute by half. So I think we'll end up winning that legal fight. Disney should not govern itself. They should absolutely be held accountable. Um, but I think some of what you've seen in the national corporate press. Yeah, it's weird, right? Well, well they, they have motivated reasoning. I mean, their thing is, OK, they don't like Florida. They don't like me. So they want to be able to color this in a way that somehow is attacking me. But they haven't done their homework. They haven't looked at the law. And so we feel very confident we're going to be good. It, clearly, you do not have a First Amendment right to corporate welfare. And also, this this uh, district was technically not Disney. Now, they had corrupted it and they had run right, it. Creek but if you're saying it's one and the same, that raises a whole host of other issues because they've done a, tr a billion dollars in municipal bonds. Mm -hmm. So if that was really Disney, then Disney really should should have those bonds called to them. Now, have you talked to Bob Iger? There's been some discussion that you guys should sit down and work it out. I haven't. I mean, look, the way I viewed it was we had the skirmish last year. We said no self-government. We implemented that consistent with what I said in the campaign. They're not going to have their own government. They're going to live under the same laws. They're going to pay taxes and pay the debts. And that's where it was headed until Disney pulled this maneuver. So we're in a situation now, forget about all the issues involving that. You can't have a situation where the legislature has spoken mm. and one company just decides to contract out against the will of the people. So we have to be willing to, to do that, and we will. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think that, that they just have to understand the party is over for them, okay? They had 60 years of privileges that no other corporation in America has had. Whether it was appropriate at the time to get them there, I don't know, but I can tell you this. When that deal was done, it was done that way because Disney promised to build communities and actually build cities where people would be able to live and work, and they never followed through on that promise. So let's talk also about the future a little bit. The number one question I get from my neighbors, Ron DeSantis is going to Iowa, Ron DeSantis is going to New Hampshire, Ron DeSantis is going to Israel. What's he up to with all this travel? Well, we were fortunate enough to be able to publish a book, The Courage to Be Free. Uh, the New York Times was not happy that they had to put me number one on the bestseller mm -hmm. list. So we got a lot of interest in that. So part of what we were doing is, you know, we've been to Texas, California, all these places, talking about the Florida blueprint and the Florida success story. We're proud of what we've been able to accomplish here. Uh, and we do think it's a model uh, for other states and for, for folks in the country. And you know, I'll tell you what. These folks that I meet with, some of these other states, they come up to me, they say, okay, what do you guys got up your sleeve mm -hmm. next? We're watching, we're watching to see what you can do. When I won the election, people said, wow, now this is a guy, not only is he delivered, but he's able to have political success because, you know, the Republican Party had a bad midterm election overall. It just right. it was disappointing. We've had losses over the last few years, and so they saw Florida as a way, not where you marry policy success with political success. 
then you got, are you going to run? Are you going to run? And what I've said is, I got this job I've got to do with this legislative session. So this is coming to an end. I still got to go through the budget. I still got to go through the bills. So that's going to take a little bit uh, more time. Then when we get on the other side of that, you know, we will be able to make any announcements as appropriate. So I just tell people to stay tuned mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we'll let you know. Next topic. Let's talk a little bit about 2024. And I know you can't say too much about this, but when you look at the polling right now, specifically the WPA polling that Chris Wilson is doing, you're very competitive against Joe Biden. You are very competitive against Kamala Harris. Talk to me about what that says to you about those two people and what they're doing to this country. Well, I think what, what they've shown, and look, I, take the polling with a grain of salt sure. this early, but sure. what they've shown consistently in the swing states is that, that we beat Biden in places like Georgia, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Nevada. These are places where you need to win to be able to win the Electoral College. Um, I think what it says is, the country looks at Biden, they see somebody that's failed, they think the country's going in the wrong direction, which, which I do too, and they would like a, a path forward that can put us in a new direction. And so I think that somebody like me in Florida that's had success kind of fits that bill. But there's a lot of real estate left to go, and as much as like I don't think Biden's good and a lot of people... You know, I mean, like, he's got a lot of people that will support him. The media will be behind him. He's got a lot of arteries of the left that will be behind him. So I don't think any of this stuff would be easy, no matter who the candidate is. What do you is. think it says about Joe Biden that Robert Kennedy Jr. is doing so well in the polling? <laughs> well, look, I mean, I think that some of this stuff, we'll have to see. I mean, I think yeah, some of these polls enough. can show that or not. Um, but, you know, he's got a famous name. And, um, and I think that in a Democratic Party, that Kennedy name probably matters. I always think... Way more important than polling is the money aspect of this and who's betting on whom and those betting sites. But also I read in the USA Today that you have more campaign funds than Donald Trump heading into 2024. <laughs> well, you know, part of it, we've had a lot of success. I mean, I think that we've created this, you know, when you, you do this stuff with politics, you got to have those grassroots people that'll sure. send, and we've been able to build up a great army. And then the fact, like Florida, we've gained so much wealth that people came in my re-election and they're like, you know what, I want to do whatever I can to help you because I don't want to have to move again. And they understood that in 18, Florida came very close to going in a much different direction. So we've really been fortunate to, to garner a lot of support. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's really the, the folks that are out there voting that really matter. And so, yes, while we had that, you know, we were able to, to not just turn out Republicans. I mean, you know, we won 60 percent of Hispanics in Florida. We won independence by 18 percentage points. And we even won Palm Beach County, which a Republican <laughs> hasn't done in 40 years in a governor's race. So that ultimately is what matters. I moved north to Martin County for... for which for, is a great yes, county, great by county, the way. Great and sheriff, love living there. Um, when was the last time you talked to President Trump? You know, I don't remember. I mean, I think that um, I definitely haven't talked to him since the 2022 fall campaign. I mean, you know, he took some shots at me sure. before the election and then afterwards. So just we haven't had uh, communication since that point. One thing that they're hitting you on with the Super PAC ads is these cuts to Medicare. And it's playing big here in Florida. I just want to give you a chance to address that. Well, those are Democrat attacks. I mean, I don't think anyone really, really buys that. I mean, senior citizens in Florida, I've been a Florida elected official for a long time. I mean, you know, they have certain benefits promised and those, those will be delivered. Uh, but I also think, you know, some of the stuff where you look forward, people in my generation, uh, those budgets that I think they're pointing to, those are just standard Republican budgets. And it's interesting, Donald Trump himself wrote a book where he was talking about the need to increase the age of eligibility for Social Security to 70 and said people shouldn't be worried about retiring, just keep working. That's what his words were. And then the budgets that they're citing were like the, the Romney uh, stuff when he ran in 2012. Uh, you know, Trump himself has um, endorsed that at the time and said that that would preserve and save Medicare. So I think, like, look, we can have debates. Why can't we debate this, though? I mean, everybody knows we have to, we have to yeah. address this, and it becomes the third rail of politics. Well, everything. here's the thing. It, it's, it's, don't use Democrat tactics. You know, Republicans can, can have discussions, but clearly nobody has ever proposed to do anything to affect the current senior citizens. I mean, of course not. They, they're, they're anticipating. My grandmother lived till 91. All her income was Social Security. Like, she had nothing else. So how are you going to say you're not going to get... So you have to do that. One thing, though, that has caused problems with Social Security is the Biden inflation because you do the cost of living. So that's really been really bad. But of course you can have a debate. I'd also say... 
if you and I were sitting here 10 years ago mm -hmm. and someone told us our debt would be 31 trillion, you and I would both have said the country will collapse if that happens. That's a massive. And you served in Congress and both of these plans. One raises the debt to, I think, 47 trillion dollars by 2033. The other one to 53 trillion dollars. Congress, I don't think, is serious about solving this problem. Well, that's the thing. I think you get in there, it's like a funhouse mirror. Like here in Florida, we have to balance the budget. Mm -hmm. We run big surpluses. We have to make decisions. What happens in Washington, because they don't have a balanced budget requirement, they will face less blowback as a politician if they charge it on the credit card. Because if they cut spending, well, maybe you like that and you don't like that. If they raise taxes, maybe they raise my, maybe I don't like that. So it's a way to pass the buck I think you need to require a balanced budget um, and have that balance and force them to make decisions. But if you look at what's happened just over the last few years with a lot of the spending that's been done, you know, a lot of the COVID spending in hindsight right. was a big mistake. You know, we really are in a bad trajectory fiscally for this country. All right. Last, I wanted to ask you about Tucker Carlson, too, if you if you care to comment on that. Tucker Carlson is a fantastic individual. I think his show was fantastic. I think it's terrible that he was uh, that he was fired. I think there's more to it. I don't really think it was about Tucker. I think it's about some of this other stuff that's going on with with, with Fox. Um, but you know, he was somebody that was willing to speak out and challenge the prevailing orthodoxies. And you know, and so he's hitting the right issues, and he's talented, and he's funny, and it was a great show. I guarantee you, whatever he does. Uh, he's going to be very successful. And oh, by the way, we're proud because he's a Florida resident mm -hmm. and, he, and he loves the state of Florida. Doesn't like the summers. He goes up to Maine for the summers, but, but, but does do that. And so, uh, so he's going he's gonna to do well no matter what he does. I think he was offered a $100 million contract by a company based uh, down in Fort Lauderdale. I'm trying to keep him here. But do you think this marks a kind of tectonic shift in the media going away from this old school model of you know, cable networks and do you think digital is the future? Well, we'll see. I mean, I think that the the ratings decline was really, really significant. I mean, you understood mm -hmm. Tucker's show would have less rating when he's not there, but it seemed like all the other shows happened. So whether that is going to mark a shift, a migration away, you know, that, that that's something that could be very good. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of stuff out there now. It's very fragmented. Um, but if you can hit uh, a, a, a sweet uh, medium there, there's a lot of people that are hunger that hunger for for that type of access. Yeah, I think a lot of people just want the, want the truth. That's all they want. Well, that's the thing. I mean, like, how bad has the national corporate media got with their narratives? And you guys push back on it in Florida. Obviously, we push back on it. But it's like one thing to have a liberal bias. It's another thing to ignore facts right. and put narrative ahead of facts. And they do that every day. And that's why trust is at an all time low with corporate media. Governor, thank you for your time. Thanks really for being it. here. Yeah, good to see you.